Ghosts are real. This much I know. On the face of it, Crimson Peak is about an ancient mansion with dark secrets. Gothic romance is a very time-honored tradition that skates really close to the darkest of fairy tales. I understand your fascination with the Sharps. Edith, this is my sister. But proceed with caution. There are several conflicting stories in this film which weaves together and creates a lot of drama and danger. There is a young woman at the center of it who is purely innocent. If you're here with me, give me a signal. It starts big, wide, and open, and it shrinks, and it becomes this very intense mystery. I have to leave. It's ultimately a dark love story. She knows everything. What sometimes people do for love is what this movie's about. You have nowhere else to go. Love makes monsters of us all. The production design of the mansion is pretty incredible. When I first walked into the set, I was completely blown away. Yeah, it's just absolutely fully realized, incredible, detailed interior. This is the biggest set I've ever been on in my life. I wanted a house that was beautiful and at the same time represented the ghosts of the past. He really wanted you to feel, you know, as you go into the house, that the house was alive, like this thing is breathing. We custom designed everything for the house. If there were certain things we liked in a lot of pieces and research, then we incorporated in the best of. It blows me away when I see it. I mean, it's one thing to go through the design process, build it, but then just to see it with the atmosphere, with the actors, it's amazing. Never go below this level. The house isn't animated, but it has its own soul. We try to echo that in architectural details and cracks in the walls that's bleeding. It's an amazing piece of work by many, many people. I wanted to get the feeling when you walked in the door, you weren't sure yet. If you're here with me, give me a signal. That the deeper you got into the house, you were stuck in the house. Edith, this is your home now. One of my favorite sets in the movie is the Gothic Corridor, where ghosts manifest themselves. That corridor is full of neat visual tricks. It's shaped like a negative space of a human figure. It's a very, very important setting where ghosts emerge. The corridor seemed like a succession of arches studded with rows of spear-like teeth. And it's a part of the house that Thomas avoids because that part of the house is where the darkest secrets are buried. There's sort of two main locations for the film. The first half takes place in Buffalo in America. Buffalo is golden and rich and sunny and warm. And in comes these beautiful, glamorous, dark shadows. Guillermo wanted them to be like ink in the world of Buffalo. Sir Thomas Sharp, Baronet. How do you manage this house? In England, their world is falling apart. We detailed the house in a way that gave you the feeling that it was corroding, it was rotting in the middle of that landscape. We were hoping you were here. We wanted in the world of Allerdale, Lucille and Thomas to be like chameleons, so they're blue against the blue of the house, and then Edith sits out in their world, she's the gold against the blue. These two worlds meet, and then between them you have red. There is a contrast between the cool world of Crimson Peak and the warm world in America. That color language is part of the storytelling. Thomas Sharp is the tall, dark stranger from the north of England. He's charming and affable and full of mystery and enigma. Let me know what you think. I'll finish it now. 
Dr. McMichael is a childhood friend of Edith Cushing. He's also a competitor with Thomas for Edith's affection. Come. I think you're gonna like what I have to show you. Guillermo and I had a lot of conversations about the contrast between Thomas and McMichael. Thomas represents the past, and McMichael is the future. Edith and McMichael were best friends. She confided in him that she had seen the ghost of her mother. He believes in ghosts, as she does. But in the battle over Edith's heart, Thomas does something which has never happened to Edith before, which is simply that he believes in her. It's um, rather good, don't you think? Really? In the end, Crimson Peak is the story of who wins in that battle. You see where I come from. Ghosts are not to be taken lightly. The scholarly set on uh, Crimson Peak sort of uh, becomes a very central set in the movie where big revelations occur. It was amazing to work there because everything was practical. So it was a working kitchen. And there were all sorts of things about the scullery. The detail in it was unbelievable. There were cracks in the tiling in the walls where the clay which the house sits on was oozing through the tiles. The scullery is a perfect transitional space between the old part of the house and the new part of the house. It's the room where the elevator is the most evident. It's sort of connecting everything from the abandonment of the attic all the way to the heart of the house. The scullery becomes a location for turning points and secrets within the story. What did you say? Aladrea Hall sits on top of a clay mine. The red clay mines are the oldest part of the house, and I think it, they hold the most secrets. It's uh, the god of the house, is the place where the most emotional and the most violent confrontations are gonna take place. The walls are dripping with red clay, everything is wet and everything is dark. I was very happy to leave that set. It was very emotional and very scared and quite a taxing couple of days that we were in the mine. The shapes of the mines are very Romanesque. Archways, ovals. I wanted them to be made out of several circles that tell you there's a repetition. If there is a body hidden in one of the baths, there must be other bodies hidden in those baths. Limbo set was a very hard set to realize because we needed to give you the illusion that we were in an exterior set. We had a white cyclorama in that set that made everything fade out to make it look infinite. For my character, it's where she really comes into her own and makes a choice about her life. It was quite a strange space to be in. It was entirely white and you didn't really have much of a sense of where you were in, in the space. It was a very important set because the two characters that are most opposite end up facing each other in nothingness. 